And here is lecture eight, food spoilage and food preservation. And the aim of this unit is to provide an understanding of the causes of food spoilage and preservation techniques to delay spoilage. And learning outcomes, by the end of this unit, you will be able to state when spoilage commences, identify what causes spoilage, give reasons why the rate of spoilage varies, and name the various forms of food preservation. So food spoilage, uh, obviously uh, it causes food to spoil, as you can see with some of the fruit there, it's starting to go mouldy. And once we get to that stage, obviously it's going to be thrown out. But what causes food spoilage? Causes include bacteria, moulds and yeasts, autolytic enzymes, overripening, enzymic browning, biochemical changes, physical damage, tainting, pests and parasites. So signs of food spoilage include off odours, discoloration, slime or stickiness, mould, texture change, taste deterioration, pest evidence, rancidity, blown cans or packs, the production of gas. So the rate of spoilage is affected by various elements. Uh, that includes things like age and condition of food, temperature the food is held at, number and type of organisms present, the type of food, the damage present, competition available, acid or alkali balance, the available water, the atmosphere, whether it's aerobic or anaerobic, and the presence of preservatives. Moulds are chlorophyll free, uh, that means with, with most vegetables, uh, especially with potatoes, I said, when they turn green, that's actually chlorophyll uh, occurring. But all the green you see in leaves, um, in vegetables such as cabbage, uh, that is chlorophyll. But moulds are chlorophyll free. They produce thread like filaments called hyphae. Uh, that produce a branch network of mycelium. The optimum growth temperature is 20 to 30 degrees C. And they can grow as low as minus 10 degrees C. Uh, you've probably seen examples of this if you keep cream or yoghurt or any other liquid uh, for too long in a fridge, which might be quite cold. Um, you will see mould growth in there after a period of time. It's aerobic, so you'll see it on the surface of the uh, food product. High humidities and temperature fluctuation actually assist growth. So mould come in three different colours. You've got black spot, which is cladosporium. You've got white spot, which is sporotrichum. And you've got green and blue, which is the more common mould that we see on food, as penicillium. And you've got whiskers, which is called mucor. Yeast are microscopic fungi. Uh, they multiply by budding. They can grow in acid, sugar and salt conditions. Growth range is 0 to 47 degrees C. The optimum growth temperatures are 25 to 30 degrees C. And again, it's aerobic. It requires uh, oxygen in order to multiply. Spoilage bacteria. Uh, we've got lactobacillus, micrococcus, clostridium, pseudomonas, acinobacter, acromobacter, flavor bacterium, and bacillus. You will get harmless changes in some food, uh, like for example salmon, you'll get struvite crystals, which are ammonium magnesium phosphate crystals building up, but they are quite harmless. Uh, grapefruit, you can get naringan crystals building up, uh, they give a bitter taste, and you'll see that with white spots. Other harmless changes, you'll get hesperidin building up in things like mandarins, where they look like white spots also. 
So let's have a look at the preservation of food. Now, there are quite a few uh, different types of preservation there. We've got high temperatures. So cooking will preserve food, make it last longer than raw food, for example. Low temperatures um, in fridges or freezers. Reducing moisture, i.e. dehydration. The addition of chemicals, um, in particular natural chemicals such, such as salt and sugar, they reduce the moisture within food by, by something called osmosis, where it actually sucks the liquid out of the uh, product. Fermentation uh, makes the product more acidic. Controlled atmospheres uh, is where you have either vacuum packaging or you've got various concentrations of different gases going into the pack. You've got smoking and irradiation. Pasteurization, sterilization and UHT or ultra heat treatment. Uh, these are all temperature, high temperature uh, preservation processes. Pasteurization, uh, this is where we use a lower temperature and time for milk for example because we don't want to give it an off taste. And that's 72 degrees C for 15 seconds. Uh, you can uh, also pasteurize egg, liquid egg, at 64.4 for 2.5 minutes. Obviously, any higher than the, the stuff will start to scramble and cook. Uh, pasteurization destroys pathogens and some spoilage uh, organisms. There's a short shelf life on pasteurized food products, and all pasteurized products need to be refrigerated. There's less reduction in vitamin and nutritional value than other forms of heat preservation. Sterilization, a different uh, temperature again, it destroys all microorganisms. It's uh, where food products are held over 100 degrees C for a suitable period of time. It gives prolonged shelf life to the product, but however there's a greater loss of vitamins and nutritional value. And there is a noted texture and flavour change. Ultra heat treatment, UHT, this is where we have very high temperatures for a short period of time. 135 degrees C for one second, for example. This destroys all microorganisms. There's a prolonged shelf life. There's a better vitamin and nutritional value. Fewer flavor problems. Then we've got cooking, where the core temperature should be uh, equal to or greater than 75 degrees C. Canning. Now, in the canning industry, the food product, food product is classed as commercially sterile. Uh, the, if the pH is greater or equal to 4.5, this can be a problem. Low acid foods require more time. High aid foods need less time. That actually should be acid foods. So high acid foods need less time. The botulinum cook is actually where food is cooked um, at more than 121 degrees C for a period of time. And that actually kills all microorganisms, their spores and toxins. And as I mentioned, 121 degrees C it says there for three minutes, but obviously depends on the size of the can or the contents within the can. Uh, so with canning, we start with raw materials. We inspect the raw materials. This is where we wash the can. We fill the can. It's sealed. It's processed. It's cooled. It's dried. Labelled. There's casing and coating of the cans. And put for storage and sale. Refrigeration. Another method of food preservation. Uh, Cyclophiles, uh, if you cast your mind back to lecture two, we've got three different uh, categories of bacteria. Those that prefer the cold, which are cyclophiles. Those that prefer sort of medium range, 20 to 50 degrees C, that would be the mesophiles, which are actually the food safety pathogens, the majority of them. And you've got thermophiles, which doesn't really affect the food industry. Uh, these like high temperatures. So cyclophiles love it in a fridge. For example, Pseudomonas, Acinobacter, Flavobacterium, Listeria, 
and moulds as well like low temperatures such as penicillium, muco, cladosporium and also enzymes. So again there's a little graphic there, keep your fridges between 1 and 4, if you keep it under 3 degrees C so much the better. Uh, then you've got to look at the quality of some of the food items such as salads uh, which could freeze. Uh, refrigeration Clostridium botulinum type E can produce a neurotoxin as low as 3.3 degrees C. Uh, therefore, the need, or, uh, if you can, of reducing your fridge temperatures to under 3 degrees C. So, consideration must be given with fridges to the siting of it. So, you don't want to keep it in a, a warm room. Construction and design of the fridge. Defrosting and cleaning. Operating temperatures. What do you do with hot food? Obviously, you need to cool it first before you refrigerate it, unless you've got blast chillers. Uh, you need to look at the contamination possibilities, packing and rotation of food, staff responsibilities, the storage life of the food products, the chill display cabinets, if you're using them, monitoring temperatures, and the selection of units. Freezing reduces moisture. Uh, the uh, water content, the moisture content at minus 50 degrees C is 0.85. It destroys some pathogens but not spores or toxins and it doesn't destroy all pathogens. Uh, we've got different types of freezing. We've got tunnel freezing, fluidized bed freezing, that's at minus 40 degrees C um, between 3 and 8 to 8 minutes. We've got air blasted, minus 40 degrees C in 2 hours. Cryogenic use of liquid nitrogen sprayed or dipped. Again, there's more details of these uh, processes within the supply notes. Plate, uh, another type of freezing, holding food between cold metal plates at minus 33 degrees C uh, for two to three hours. You've got pellofreeze, uh, this is used for liquids and semi solids. Gyrofreeze, uh, which food is kept at minus 60 degrees C for a short period of time. Uh, reduction of moisture or the availability of water. Uh, if you don't reduce, sorry, uh, with dried foods, you will get a survival of microorganisms and spores, in particular spores, because they like dry conditions, but they won't germinate. Most bacteria require an AW uh, greater than 0.95. Xerophilic organisms prefer drier uh, areas uh, or conditions. So you're talking about 0.6 or less. Uh, dehydration is the removal of moisture. Um, and again, the way you keep uh, dry food safe is to make sure it stays dry. Uh, most dry products are 0.6 uh, availability, AW or availability of water. Methods available for dehydration include sun drying, hot air, uh, for example tunnel drying, fluidized bed drying, roller drying, spray drying, uh, the use of warm air, uh, which they use with accelerated freeze drying, Fermentation, which reduces uh, the moisture and the pH, and the addition of salt or sugar. Um, we've got a little problem there with Staphylococcus aureus, because if you can remember, that's a halophile, which means it is salt tolerant. That's why you find it on us, because um, we've got very salty bodies, uh, but they love those conditions. Uh, curing the smoking. Um, with curing, it really comes from the old thought where if we add certain products such as salt and sugar, uh, vinegar to foods, it will cure it of all diseases. So that's why we call it curin. Um, curin is the addition of salt, sugar, nitrates, nitrate, sorry, uh, for meat and fish. Again, the salt and sugar reduces the moisture content. Nitrates, they act as a chemical preservative. Um, there are two different types of uh, bacon curin. You can use traditional, uh, which is a dry cure, uh, rubbing it with sugar and salt and perhaps other herbs and spices, and letting that slowly draw the moisture out. 
so that turns pork into bacon or you can use the rapid which is a wet process this is most of the cheap bacon you see on sale in uh, shops and supermarkets um, it's okay it tastes fine but when you cook it you probably see it yourself try to fry it um, you get a pan full of water and the, the bacon um, it uh, shrinks quite considerably smoking uh, food is suspended over smoldering hardwood now there are two types of smoking there's hot smoking and cold smoking hot smoking uh, gives us temperatures up to 71 degrees C this adds flavor dries the food surface um, chemicals such as uh, alcohols aldehydes um, are the result of smoking uh, they are produced from the smoke itself uh, all vegetated bacteria destroyed because uh, 71 degrees C is a cooking process as well uh, moles and spores do survive however and there will be an ox antioxidant buildup uh, on the fat uh, which again acts as uh, a prevention of rancidity. Cold smoking, uh, which is around 33 degrees C, they use this a lot with fish. Um, it's not a cooking process, it just imparts flavour. So the food product itself is not cooked. Uh, you need to store that smoked fish at less than 3 degrees C because of the problem with Clostridium botulinum. Smoked salmon, for example, uh, is classed as a raw fish, although it is cured because of the cold smoking process. Food preservation chemicals, uh, benzoic acid, um, you've, uh, or you might not have noticed, but if you look on the ingredients of uh, uh, most canned foods, bottled foods, um, Foods that don't require refrigeration, you'll see potassium benzoate uh, as one of the um, ingredients. Then you've got sulfur dioxide, sulfites used a lot in wines and ciders uh, to kill off the yeasts. Uh, sodium and calcium propionate, uh, I've not seen this personally um, as an ingredient, but what I always say to learners, um, try to use as much as possible fresh food you know exactly what goes in there if you look at the ingredients list on a lot of prepackaged foods if you don't know what the or one of the ingredients is then don't use it because uh, in all intents and purposes you don't know what you put into your body so be careful uh, you know uh, potassium sorbate you've got um, sodium benzoate there's all different chemicals you'll find in nowadays foods uh, there's potassium sorbate as i mentioned Acetic acid, mm, um, vinegar for all intents and purposes, so not that bad as a preservative. And these are quite bad, antibiotics such as nicin or nissin. Uh, again, these are banned um, from the food chain. Uh, not so much banned because you will find that antibiotics are injected into non-organic animals um, early on in life, but they must remain antibiotic free uh, for at least 63 days before they are slaughtered or there is the possibility of the antibiotics getting into the food chain controlled atmosphere or map this is where a food is gas flushed with carbon dioxide at a 10 percent concentration it slows down spoilage organisms reduces enzymic action and reduces oxidation or rancidity Vacuum packing, uh, this is where all air is removed. It prevents oxidative rancidity. You need to store it in a chill container below 5 degrees C. It controls aerobes, uh, but it does not control the anaerobes, for example, uh, Clostridium botulinum. Other ways of uh, providing uh, preservatives uh, are by the use of gamma rays. Uh, x-rays and high-speed electrons the maximum dose is 10 kgy the advantage is destroys vegetative bacteria destroys molds and yeast destroys insects inhibits sprouting delays ripening in active parasites sorry it inactivates parasites there's no temperature rise uh, and you can do it to packaged and frozen food 
The disadvantages, enzymes are not deactivated. It encourages oxidative rancidity. The long-term effects on consumer are unknown. There is some nutritional loss, for example, the vitamins. There's no test to see if the food has been irradiated. It leads to premature softening in fruits. Spores and toxins are not destroyed. There are more dangerous mutants or pathogens uh, may be formed. And the reduction in hygiene standards due to over-reliance in irradiation processes. So this is the symbol you would see on foods that have been irradiated. Um, it looks quite green and pleasant, isn't it? But uh, again, we don't know what the results of irradiated food are on a human being over a long period of time. Uh, this is the electromagnetic spectrum, and it shows you the different types of electromagnetic uh, radiation and the units involved. For example, you've got gamma rays uh, between uh, 0.01 and 1.4, X-rays further on up the uh, scale between uh, 1 and 1,000 ultraviolet. You've got between, what, 136 and 4,000. You've got visible light, which is between 4,000 and 8,000. Then you've got infrared uh, between 8,000 and 4 times 10 to the power of 6. And one Armstrong unit uh, is equal to 1 over 10 million millimetres. So, key points of this section include uh, spoilage commences immediately after harvesting, slaughter or fishing. Spoilage may be due to enzymes, bacteria, moles, yeasts or pests. Rancidity or oxidation, physical damage, bruising or ice formation or tainting are all types of uh, spoilage. The rate of spoilage varies with temperature, number of organisms present, the type of food, the competition available, the acid alkali balance, the available water and the atmosphere. Preservation, slow spoilage and multiplication of pathogenic organisms. Low and light temperatures, sorry, low and high temperatures, dehydration, chemicals, controlled atmospheres, botulinum cooking canning, which is under 21 degrees C for three minutes or more, uh, core temperature, are uh, all types of um, preservation processes.